Okay, so this is Vance Creek. Uh, we are doing the first iteration of this race, which means we are going clockwise around the loop. There's a second iteration that goes counterclockwise. Um, so I've started us right before uh, the end of lap two. Uh, we are going up the, the hill that is both the end and the start of the loop of this race. The start finish is essentially on the top of a hill. We go up this little climb, we have a little flat, and then we go back down, and then we have a long flat. So as of right now, I've got a teammate up the road uh, with two other guys, and so it's my job to hang out and, uh, and sit myself on any moves that try and bridge up. So worst case scenario, we have two people in the break. Uh, yeah, you can see the, the 200 meter sign there. This is the last 200 meters before the finish line. It kind of flattens out for this last 200 meters, so it's not a not a pure climbing finish. Just uh, climbing up to the last 200 meters, and then this one little uh, little bump up uh, right before the finish line here. You know, one other thing to note is that there is a hard headwind uh, on the way up this climb, which changed the dynamics of the race from how I expected it. And we are experiencing a really, really tough headwind for this last 200 meters. You can see people are actually pushing pretty hard up there, and we're cruising along at 17, 18 miles per hour. The weather was awesome. The day was sunny and 70 degrees. Wonderful day for biking, wonderful course. It's at this old nuclear power plant. You can see the, the old cooling tower is there off to the left. Uh, it's a nice indication that you're close to the start-finish. Yeah. Alright, so we're jumping ahead a little bit here, uh, just to where the uh, downhill starts, because downhills are fun. So, you know, why not? It's like, I don't know, maybe like negative four degrees of slope. Uh, mostly no pedaling. Um, uh, just a little jostling around in position here. Um, mostly uh, you want to be kind of close to the front once you get to the bottom of the hill because there's often a surge of riders for a doomed attack, but it's nice to be able to follow them. Um, I've got, gosh, I think we've got four or five people in this race. Um, you can see the Apex kits uh, in front of me. There's two blue Apex kits. That's, uh, that's my team. Um, We are getting down to the uh, the bottom of the steep part of this hill, and now is when I expect uh, attacks to fly. Um, and sure enough, there's a surge of riders going on the right there, and the group will easily follow this. Um, see, I'm not spiking power at all to roll with the group. Yeah, the, the peloton just has a ton of inertia coming off of this hill. I mean, we're cruising at 39 miles per hour right now. So you've got to do a lot of work to be able to even hold that speed in the wind, let alone accelerate away from the group. I bought myself an apple. This is like my third time recording this, so you just got to deal with this. I'm sorry. Yep, sure enough, group gets caught. Not too worried about it. All right, so I jumped a little bit ahead. We're rolling up to this right-hand corner. My teammates and I had identified that this is a uh, a tight spot um, during the race. You want to make sure that you're close to the front uh, as we approach this corner. And so you can see, I see a move go off the front here, and I want to make sure that I follow it so that I'm right up with the uh, the mix of things when we take this right turn. It switches from a crosswind to a tailwind, so it's a great place to put in an attack because the draft just counts for less when you're in a tailwind. I actually watched some uh, YouTube videos of uh, past year's races, and there were a lot of people who got dropped right here, transitioning to this tailwind area. So we're cruising around on some farm roads now. Um, so the, the center line rule is still 
ostensibly in effect. But as you can see, people are just riding wherever. You can see here we called out, like, why don't you move over to the right? Let's all move over. Um, and then, of course, as soon as everybody moves over, then there's an attack flying on the left. Now. Yep, there it goes. Um, so yeah, people were really paying attention to the center line rule here. Yeah, luckily I snagged a, a nice draft to follow that attack because again, I've got my teammate up the road and it's my job to make sure that I follow any bridgers. So here I am doing my job. jumped forward a little bit here. We are actually just catching the break now. I was really surprised. I thought that this break was going to go the distance. I was uh, I was really hoping somebody would put an actual chase in and nobody wanted to. Uh, but then we had one guy, Evan Blanchett, goes to the front of the group and chases for an entire lap, just pulling us along. And that's the only way we were going to catch the break. But it's nice, I got a good rest in following Evan around. Um, so right now we're actually pulling onto the crosswind section of the course. This one's a much worse cross section than the other side of the course. And I figured an echelon would develop, so I'm uh, going with the first move here. By the way, the wind is from right to left. And uh, it looks like uh, I'm getting a really good uh, draft here. Waiting to see if the group is gonna maybe blow apart. Crosswind is always a good place to attack. Um, so you can see I, I rolled through here, but it looked like uh, everybody was just kind of soft pedaling, and I realized that this isn't going to work, this echelon isn't going to move, and so I kind of gave up on it, and I immediately started moving towards the left-hand side of the road so that I could gutter everybody. If, uh, if I'm not going to get a draft, neither is anybody else. when you better be in an echelon or you better be guttering people. All right, jumping ahead again, and we are back on the climb. So, uh, and I'm, I'm pretty happy about what's going on right now because we've got, we've got people in front of me because, again, there's a headwind on this climb, and you actually get a substantial amount of draft. Uh, so it's worthwhile to not be on the front. Um, and, uh, but the, you know, the pace is being pushed, so I'm uh, being able to take advantage of my, uh, my light weight and my good five minute power. Um, this is what I want. I want this pace to be high. I want other people to, uh, to be suffering on this climb. Usually you can just uh, go to the front and pull like a big dumb horse because the draft doesn't really matter, but this is not as good of a strategy because of the headwind. I don't know why I felt like showing you guys the sketchy maneuver, but I, I found a good spot to move up on the right here. There was almost no space to do it, but I can squeeze in there a little bit. Um, it just felt so efficient and smooth to hold my speed through there. Um, you know, I could fit, but it was tight. Just uh, just getting to the end of the climb again. Things are breaking up a little bit, but you know people are pretty motivated to bring things together. And like I said, that that headwind that's punishing us just makes a big difference. You know, things that would normally blow up on the way up the hill uh, just don't because uh, people in the front are putting out an extra 50 watts or so. So uh, 
I suppose now is a good time to tell you that uh, I had a plan with my teammate, the teammate that was in the break, that's Adrian, super strong guy, um, good climber too, um, where if, uh, if we, were, we were all together at the end of this race, it's going to be my job to, uh, to pull him to the finish line, and given how much headwind there is here, uh, it's a real job, um, you know, it's not just a, uh, pulling our way up the climb, but actually pulling into the headwind, and I don't know what it is, but like right here where it opens up, the wind just becomes punishing. And so there's like 150 meters between that 200 meters to go sign and when it kind of punches up towards the uh, finish line here. And so it's my job to get him to get him up that hill at the front of the group and then punch my way through this headwind to uh, make sure that he has a good position for the sprint to the line. We'll, uh, we'll see how that goes in a little bit. So we're just starting the final lap now. All right, so we're, as we're approaching our uh, downhill on the last lap, a few uh, inland, inland Empire, I think it is? I don't know, it says Ibex on their jersey, so I usually just call them Ibex. Um, so these Ibex riders decided to uh, start lighting it up. Um, and I am happy to, uh, to follow these sort of moves, especially before a downhill. But regretfully, here I am finding myself on the front of the race, but since we're going downhill and I don't need to pedal, no big deal. You know, it's kind of nice to see the, the lead car every now and then. You know, it'll give you some peace of mind that there's not some secret breakaway up the road. Oh yeah, downhills are awesome. And we can see this uh, Ibex rider comes back to the front. Not quite sure why he uh, wants to keep the pace up here, but uh, I am happy to draft. You know, I wonder if, uh, if this rider is just thinking that he wants to be near the front because the road kind of gets clogged on the the downhills and there are people jostling for position, so it's not a bad place to be. It's like a left to right crosswind here, so I'm actually getting pretty good draft, even though it looks like I'm not on his wheel. Still getting a good, uh, good draft here. start the uh, steeper part of the downhill again. We have a new new Ibex rider on the front who wants to uh, wants to take a little bit of a pull. Again, I'm very happy to uh, hop in the draft. No big deal. As you can see, I'm not not exactly even pushing the pedals at all. Oh, and there goes uh, Super Tuck. Uh, might be bad for UCI races, but us Cat 3s can still use it. Whoop, another super tuck. And whoa! That was a uh, kind of quick movement there. Uh, let's see that again. I'm not quite sure what happened there. So we can see the super tucked rider gets into the draft and then swings really hard to the left. 
You know, it doesn't look so bad in slow-mo, but when we look at that in real time, that seems like an awfully fast move to be doing uh, when your chest is on the handlebars. Okay, where are we now? All right, so we're rolling into the end of this race. Uh, it's now my job to make sure that if anything gets away, Apex is in it, and I'm also supposed to be ready to work with Adrian. Uh, so we start talking to each other. Of course, here goes an attack. Um, luckily, I was able to hop onto Sam's wheel here and get a good draft. I'm in crit brain mode, follow everything. You can see Sam flicks me through. Well, you know, it's my job to keep things together, so I'm, I'm okay with closing this gap down. Although I'd rather, rather not if somebody else wanted to pull through. Looks like this rider up here is not super motivated to keep going. So I'm not freaking out. Again, here I am just uh, sitting on the front. Uh, no worries, I'm pretty much committed to working for Adrian at this point, so it's really just my job to police the front. Oh, and there goes Chris up there. Perfect. Now I don't have to uh, don't have to worry about anything. I can just chill back here. I'm honestly feeling amazing at this point in the race with my heart rate all low and stuff. Uh, but it never hurts to be fresher. Just hop on Nick's wheel as people come up. Again, I'm stoked that Chris is up there so I don't have to uh, follow this move. Notice that you're seeing a lot more of my teammates at the front of the race now. That's uh, at the on the last lap. This is a good race strategy. Alright, now we're taking a right turn into the crosswinds. So here I'm worried. I want to make sure that if uh, if something goes, I can pull Adrian to it. I also want to make sure that Adrian has a draft. Um, we were talking back there on the farm roads, and I know he's on my wheel, so I kind of want to stay a little bit to the right, make sure that he can get some draft off of me. Again, the, the wind here is right to left, so that's why everybody is guttering on the left-hand side of the road. Uh, here we've got that, that Ibex rider cruising off in front. Um, that looks a little bit dangerous. That guy's been climbing really well today, but I figure somebody's going to come on my right and want to close that down. And sure enough, we got this Hagen's Vermin rider, who I'm getting a wonderful draft off of. And basically from here until we turn into the headwind, everybody just rides on the right-hand side of the road. So there's lots of, lots of opportunities for a good draft. I don't know why everybody switched from guttering people to uh, riding on the right, but I am... Uh, perfectly okay with that. Look at this low heart rate situation going on here. beats per minute. Hell yeah. Uh, it looks like a solo rider is getting up the road. I can't remember who that is, but since we're getting close to this final climb, and I'm a good climber, and Adrian's a good climber, I'm not too worried about it. You know, I figure that the the group, anybody that the group is going to let get away is uh, probably not that big of a threat. And so I'm willing, willing to sit in, save some energy, and go spend it on the climb. Especially when we're in a headwind situation, and uh, somebody... Somebody might be willing to hop in front of me and uh, go break that wind. Both uh, Fount, who's to my right here, and Gene Johnson, who's in front, both of them have uh, 
pretty good representation in this group. Um, so I expect to see them working for their designated sprinter, if you can call it that, on an uphill. You can see here I'm pretty set on uh, being close to the front, especially for this last right-hand turn going into the hill. that Ibex rider and it's time to start following the wheel. So you can see this fizzles. again. basically the story for the rest of this climb until I decide to put my head in the wind. Just follow this particular wheel. <coughs> this phone rider puts it in one heck of a pull. You can see now we're actually cruising. This hill is kind of rolly, so we've got some flats and some downhills in it. And so not only is it a headwind, but we're cruising along at 34 miles an hour. I get to relax. The phone finally pulls off. And, you know, we've almost caught these riders, and I'm back on the front. Uh, I'm willing to work a bit, but I would sure love it if somebody else would come around. So I flirt with Doom and let them roll. Wow, they, they build up some distance real quick. And Fount is back on the front. Good for me. Sorry to waste your time and energy, Fount, but I was really hoping you would keep pulling. stars. I found myself in a really good situation. <coughs> oh, I'm actually battling a cold right now. So if I can't ride, I might as well be uh, narrating videos, right? Gosh, Fount is still pulling. What a nice place to be getting a draft.
so there's this valley that's coming up uh, before the road really turns upwards and the uh, final climb begins. And my plan is to use that bit of road, that valley, as a slingshot. So here you can see I uh, wait until we get a bunch of speed, roll around this mountain rider, and start holding my pace. lights this up, jumping on Will's wheel. Will's a junior, a very strong climber. This isn't a bad wheel to be on, except for he's kind of a small guy and a very good draft. All right, now I realize that it's time to stop letting people come through. It's time for me to pull. So I call to Adrian, make sure that he's behind me, and uh, start putting the power in. Can't let this guy get too far away. We're getting pretty close to the finish line now. Less than a K to go. I figured that holding about uh, 6 watts per kilogram would keep everybody at bay. My well, plan was to stay here all the way to the finish line and then give whatever I have left at the 200 meter sign. it's about right here that I realized that we're definitely going to catch this uh, this lone rider. So you can see I'm taking a little bit of a break, dropping it down to like 300, 350 for a sec, catch my breath uh, before we put in this last dig. I do have to dig as I go around him because I do not want this rider hopping onto us very easily. He's, uh, he's keen on that. He's accelerating, too. Alright, we've made it. We're at the front of the race. Oh, yeah, so I check to see if Adrian's there. Tell him to keep talking to me. And he tells me he's good, let's go. I'm at the 200 meter sign, so here we go. This is what I got left. I'll give you about 500 watts. Oh, I'm dying. 187 beats per minute is, like, generally I consider 185 to be my max heart rate. So 187 is bleeding from the eyeballs, heart rate. 188, look at that. And there we go. Adrian takes off. Nobody could come around him. From what my teammates told me, the field was just blown up behind us. 